Today, hello, today we're going to discuss three types of economy. There's free market economy, there's planned economy, and there's the mixed economy. If we look around the world, we will see mainly there is the mixed economy. And uh, in some places, we will find centrally planned economies. And hardly ever do we see free market economies. Now, let's look at um, command market first of all. This is where the economy is run and uh, managed by the state. And this can be very good because it will uh, ensure fairness and equality within the economy. For example, rich people will be taxed and poor people will be given benefits, putting everyone on a certain path and status to be able to contribute to society. Also, as we come on to later in the free market economy, some goods will not be produced, so there's no incentive to be produced. So the government will produce them in this centrally planned one and they will be of a better standard. For example, the government is guaranteed to provide something like street lighting. So in the free market economy, there will be uh, street light everywhere and to a good standard because it's produced by the government whose intention is to uh, the welfare of society. Whereas if we look at private individuals, which will come into in their mind, all they will think about is making the most profit. However, it's not very good to also be in a centrally planned economy because there are many setbacks. For example, people are going to work. They won't be motivated to work because they know that they won't be getting much out of it. Whereas if a private individual is paying them, they know that the harder the work, the more money they get. There's no incentive for people to work. People uh, would easily stop working and they know the government's guaranteed to give them benefits. So hey, why should we work? Also, there's a lack of competition. This means that if the government really, really wanted to, the prices could be set blooming high. But because the government uh, has only one intention, and that is, um, sorry, and that is to make sure that everything is done uh, as the best as it can for society, that will not happen. Let's look at. Um, at the other extreme, so one extreme we have centrally planned, completely run by government. On the other extreme, we have the free market economy. This economy has no government intervention whatsoever. It is purely run by um, the private individuals and businesses. And there is no government intervention. Resources in this economy are allocated by the market mechanism, i.e. demand and supply. So... Prices are set through demand and su supply, where resources such as labor and everything are used will be done through demand and supply. Okay, now this can bring a lot of advantages to an economy. For example, there people will be mo more motivated to work, as we mentioned before. They know that the harder they work, um, the more private individuals will pay them. Therefore, they have incentive to work. They won't be... Uh, uh, not working hard because they know that there is no benefits or anything given to them. Who's going to give them? There is no government. Also, taxes won't be there. People will be richer because if there is no government, then who's going to charge taxes? Where is tax going to go? Everybody has more money. They're pumping more into the economy, which is boosting it, increasing output, which is a good for economic growth. Also, there will be uh, quite a lot of competition although this is quite an arguable statement because if we think about it in theory there should be a lot of competition to keep prices low but usually in a free market economy there's only a few big giants who survive consumers go to them because of loyalty uh, brand loyalty etc so therefore other ones basically die out uh, but the last advantage is there is uh, consumer sovereignty this is when resources are allocated uh, through the consumer's wishes. So if it is summer and all the consumers are demanding for ice cream, a lot of resources will be put into labor, land, capture, everything put into producing ice cream. When it's winter, everybody wants hot chocolate pudding. All the resources will then be converted into putting it there. It's all based on consumers' wants and wishes. Although this has negative um, effects too, and that's why uh, we rarely ever see this economy. That's because there's a lack of equality. If you are poor and you can't, uh, if you don't earn that much money, uh, because 
that you're new to you've just this is your first job for example then if you hurt your ankle you will not be allowed to go to the doctor because you will not be able to aff be able to afford it so uh, there's a lack of equality also um a firms may act uh, socially unacceptable as in they will charge um women less mo uh, they will pay women less money than men they will be able to do that they will be able to create um, a negative external cost like pollution because nobody's going to stop them so they will take the easy way out also what we were saying before is that there are some necessary necessity goods to society um, which are mainly public and merit goods for example education street lighting defense health care there is no incentive for a private individual to offer this to consumers why should a private individual offer street line are they going to make money no so goods like this won't be there and overall society will fail there will be market failure also <coughs> demerit goods the opposite of merit goods for example smoking alcohol people will be able to afford this because there's no taxes the more they get into it the more easy it is to become addicted to it and therefore you know they are overproduced whereas good goods such as fruit and stuff which people don't like to eat will be underproduced these have external costs and as we and as we mentioned before about the competition that Mm, you can't just say that there's a lot more competition price will be down it's usually run by a few big giants also the society is sending a wrong message to young ones it is encouraging um self-interest greed misuse materialism selfishness it's encouraging it's bringing people up like this and it's it's um, not really right in some people's views the best economy is the mixed economy because it has the best of both worlds it has governments making sure that merit goods are being produced to a sufficient level and demerit goods are being uh, kept as minimum as possible it ensures that uh, people are able to go uh, like be available to reach uh, resources such as health care if they have hurt themselves the government is there as well as there are private individuals boosting businesses out there and um, you know there is competition and there is a little bit of price mechanism through demand and supply as well as government intervention so now let's see how does the government intervene so for a mixed economy it's the same as free market but the government will intervene will have like a dips of centrally planned so first way is taxes and subsidies demerit goods such as alcohol and everything the government has to restrict the demand and the supply of this how can they do it it can tax producers and uh, in effect consumers as well and if they want to encourage for example people to eat bananas or encourage people to go to the gym they will give these businesses subsidies so that they can increase the supply they might um, do advertising campaigns and stuff so the consumers are aware and they um, use more of these um, types of products it's also to redistribute wealth because the government needs to make sure that there aren't people homeless and people who are billionaires it needs to make sure that it's got a fully able society a fair one an equality one so we have dips of command um, economy within it also um it will provide as well as having all the goods that private uh, investors will provide to make profit the government will provide for things like defense schooling um health care street lights which private individuals won't and they're really important without education society fails and also the government has legislation this is really important because without laws you know your society will fail people will go around killing each other things would happen if um that's why the government create like for example on some demerit goods like illegal drugs for example cocaine or something 
which people can become addicted to, they can ruin their lives through that. What the government will do is they will put a ban on it to prevent the number of people. Obviously, people, some people will continue to do it, but they'll put a ban on it to try and restrict the number of people that do it. Make sure that there is a very good workforce. We don't want um, all junkies as a workforce for an economy. And also safety. It's all very important for the government to protect the society with the free market economy. Who is going to protect the people? The food you are eating, how do you not know, has been put through machines which are not clean. Because what's going to make uh, the firm actually be bothered to clean their um, machines? It's just going to cost them extra. Therefore, the government is needed to do stuff like that. So, thank you for listening.